goddess of victory is waiting to descend upon the ring. WrestleMania! Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, sir. Oh, my goodness. Reset, please. Oh man, they're all back, of course. These warriors will create another legend here at the world shattering P1 ring. These are battles of honor, battles of will. Sparks will fly. Some fight for glory. Yeah, Kanye won't stand a Some chance against Mitsuru. Will this be decided by pure muscle, or will a battle of wits determine the outcome? I guess... He looks really pissed. Are heating up! Just didn't want to change Tonight, after Teddy, huh? Who will win the title of champion? Who will be crowned with the winner's Labris. He looks really happy to be fighting, actually. I guess she's just happy to not be the damsel in distress. Oh, that's her shadow form. Oh, okay. As the Grand Prix plunges into its final chapter, the P1 Climax is... Barely getting started! Seriously, though. The Countdown. Hey. Uh, this is different. Wait a minute. Huh? The man. Oh, this is like the midnight hour. What in the world? The town. Yukari. The dark hour? The midnight hour? I can't remember what it's called. What the? Yoo-hoo! All you P1 crazies out there, sorry about the long wait. Oh man. The TV shows a familiar classroom. If I remember right, that's the announcement room at the school Labrys created inside the TV world during the P1 Grand Prix. Standing in that announcement room is General Teddy. Actually, just his head turtling away. <laughs> the P1 Climax. It's the end of the world. One-on-one -on -one death match that's worthy of the name Climax. And best of all, if you don't win the one-on-one -on -one tournament to the finish within the hour, the world will end. No punches pulled this time. Oh, boy. I'll make myself clear so that no one misunderstands. This will not be taking place within the TV world. It will, in fact, take place in the reality which you occupy. Enjoy it while you can. Alrighty then. Time to show off how that special stage is going. Oh, is it time to see Tartarus? I missed that tower. Whoa! When did that happen? That happened really quickly. That is definitely a callback straight to Persona 3. They even got Fuka. What? Fuka's not even a fighter. Come on, man. Is that Mitsuru san? They got wrecked. Akihiko Pirates wanted to go fight some wolves. And again, if we don't have a champion, everyone's a goner anyway. So she'll be in good company. Best of luck to all of you. The display cuts off abruptly and the TV becomes a silent box. Realizing that a strange red light is filling the one stark room, I dash towards the window. The town outside is covered in an eerie red fog. What is that? It's fog that is red. The streetlights are off and I don't sense anyone's presence. That hazy light illuminating the town 
it's the red fog. Seeing the town in such an obviously abnormal state snaps me back to my senses and I quickly look back into my room. Nanako! Dojima-san! Leave me in coffins? No one answers. I rush down the stairs and check all the rooms, but no matter how hard I look, the two who live here are nowhere to be found. Oh. What in the world is going on here? The P1 Climax? I'm with Suicide? Are people really captives? And worst of all, this isn't the TV world. Is this really still the real world? If so, what's happened to the townspeople? They're in coffins. A wave of confusion and fear crashes over me as I sort through the information at hand. My cell phone won't even turn on like it's all suddenly broken. It's happening again. The Juness Food Court. That's right. Whenever we had a case, that's where we'd always gather. If Yosuke, Chi, and Yukiko have noticed this too, then they'll definitely be headed there. Teddy should be with Yosuke, so there's no need to worry about him. Kanji, though, he might head straight into the TV. I chuckled to myself at the thought, a rare moment of humor in this looming crisis. I know where I need to be, so I quickly prepare myself. Whenever we needed to fight, I was always clad in my Yasugami high uniform, to think that I'd be wearing it again so soon. It's with a sense of trepidation that I opened the front door. These big words. When are we getting to the first fight? To be continued. Was that all? Oh, uh, we got options. Okay. So we either go with Risei. Or we go with Nalto. I haven't played as either character. Hmm. This must be used Sprint right here because it goes straight down the middle. Or not. Oh my god, look how many chapters there are in this. Jesus. That's crazy. That is insane. There's a lot of content in this game. Alright, so it's find the clues or impatience. We'll probably go with find the clues first you might hear a little bit of of um echo off the microphone i noticed it when i was editing but i've got my tv turned down to six and i do like to hear the game so even though it's just like if it bothers anybody i'm sorry i don't have a headset that i can plug into my uh playstation and still have the sound run to the computer that's one of the things I'm looking into getting. So for now, there's not much I can really do. But I decided to go with Naltos first, by the way. So let's jump right back in. The clock's ticking echoes through the room when I look up from the file I hold. It seems I yearn for some mental simulation to distract me from the sheer volume of information I'm attempting to process. But when I look up, all that's before me are the tall stacks of files I brought in from the reference room. Even when I cooperated with the investigation as a detective, I'd only been in this room a few times. They must have ushered me into the drawing room on the highest floor of Inaba Station today in order to send a message. Don't draw attention to yourself. I lower my hat to rest my eyes and spend some time thinking back on the conversation I had a short while ago. I see. In other words, nothing suspicious is apparent in the current Kirija group. Man in suit. There are no factors that would necessitate detouring Mitsuru Kirijo or the shadow operatives which she leads. What the hell? The man holding my report falls silent, pondering something. His reaction shows that he most likely foresaw what sort of report I'd hand in. The well-dressed man before me belongs to the National Police Agency Security Bureau Security Planning Division, or in brief form, the Public Safety Police. Oh boy. 
It was he who requested the undercover investigation into Mitsuri-san's shadow operatives. Mitsuru Kirijo seemed to have some idea who stole her cargo, yes? She did indeed. To begin with, the culprit knew the contents of the cargo which even Miss Kirijo herself did not fully understand. It follows that the culprit in this case was someone with intimate knowledge of the Kirijo group's dark secrets. Ooh, now, the dark Kirijo secrets! Deals with this culprit will surely shed more light upon her true motives. I'm guessing they don't trust her. Half of that is true and half is sophistry. I need to discover the trump card that public safety is hiding. For, mo for most likely that trump card will lead us to the culprit of this case, the one who stole Lavarus and threw her into the TV world. After a moment of silence, the man places a stack of thick folders before me. If he had prepared this in advance, that means he was weighing his options. He knows of my intentions, yet he must have made the decision that what they stand to gain is worth the risk. Report to us again when you find out more. <laughs> and, that, and he's gone. With that, the man leaves the room. It seems my gamble paid off. Whether I find out more or not, it's certain that something will happen. Labrus's kidnapper hasn't been caught, and the case is ongoing. Even now, there may be development somewhere. My friends on the investigation team must be having a strategy meeting at that food court around now. Though it's been a while since any of us have seen you, Senpai, so the conversation may have already digressed. Sighing, I force aside the twinge of loneliness and drop my gaze to the file that my gamble won. The Kirijo Ergonomics Research Laboratory. An organization specializing in research upon shadows. Hmm. So does everyone just know about shadows all of a sudden? Why well, I demanded a public safety was an investigative document on the Kirijo Group Research Institute, which no longer exists. The founder of that institute was Mitsuru-san's grandfather, Koitsu Kirijo. The contents of that report were filed with matters that were hard to believe, or filled with matters. The Dark Hour, a different world populated by shadows that seems to intrude on the real world. The mysterious, almost alien artifacts known as plumes of dusk that can induce a personality. Humanoid robots called anti-shadow suppression weapons that were developed to oppose shadows. Artificial persona users who gained their abilities with special drugs. Had I not seen Aigasan and Labrys with my own two eyes, the supernatural contents of this file would seem ludicrously implausible. A flood of shadows and the manifestation of personas. There are many similarities to what we experienced. Except you guys naturally she awakened your personas. The catastrophe was artificially induced in the name of research. I sense an unwavering commitment to duty from Mitsuri-san and her team. Though they, like us, are Persona users, the horrors in this file must be why I detected a very different type of resolve from them. I hesitate to look into such matters without their consent, but I doubt they would volunteer much. No. From what I can deduce based on this, the culprit in Labrys' case is without a doubt related to Kirijo and Ergo Research. The clue that leads to the truth has to be here. And if by chance something were to happen to Mitsuru-san and her people, we would need to know more about our common enemy. Hmm? Shuji Akutsuki. Ah! The position of chairman at Gekko Kanhai after Ergo Research was disbanded. Mitsuru-san went there. He was a... Deceased crazy motherfucker. Cause of death. Falling from the school's observatory. Was it suicide? Nope. No listed well, family. Well, kind of, I guess? There was no other information in regards to him in the document I gained from public safety. The simplicity of the sex in, in regards to the Shuji Akutsuki, an obviously important person, all left an impression on me. Do we get to fight soon? <laughs> Do we get to fight? I finished reading over the material. Hold on. Hold on. I love this fucking song. <laughs> this is just. Oh, I love how they have their own original soundtrack and then they have like some of the best songs from Persona 3 and Persona 4. Man. <clears throat> I finished reading over the material, but to be honest, it tells me little. Most of the principals involved are already deceased, including Koitsu Kirijo, Shuju Ikutsuki, and the Persona users whose abilities were artificially awakened. Still, I do learn something. The culprit.